All right, y'all. Now we are going to be, or now I'm going to be demonstrating how to do three one twill. That is over three, under one. So it is, this is my favorite twill to weave because it is very straightforward. You are lifting one heddle at a time, which represents one shed at a time, and then you have your pickup sticks. And you're using your, um, I'm using a shuttle, as you see right now. Um, you can use a shed stick to be able to hold the threads up, which makes passing the um, shuttle with the yarn through super simple. And it's very clear what threads that you are going under. Um, this is the most, I think this is, you know, the most straightforward <laughs> of the twills because you're only, you're only raising one head at a time. And it's simple and I I enjoy <laughs> the simplicity of it um, if you were you know if you were wanting to do um, something fancy you could do something fancy in the threading and then weave um, you know over three under one uh, the program like fiberworks would be something that you could play with it you know so that you could incorporate maybe you know more time in your threading and have a little easier going time weaving but anyway we're not we're, I'm getting ahead of you and myself um, let me just explain to you what I'm doing so that you can see um, if you if you're not getting it already just looking at the video it's just pretty straightforward I am now this is the first so this is Shet one <clears throat> excuse me and I am raising the heddle so I'm going to go to the second heddle or the second shaft which is the third heddle and I'm going to raise it I'm going to put my pickup stick under the raised threads I am using a floating salvage and that's why I do pause a little bit to make sure I'm going over or under the floating salvage um, you know to keep that helps with keeping your edges straight and not having long floats um, going up the sides of your um, cloth. When you're starting out, it may be simpler not to worry about the floating salvage, right? And you'll just understand when you get those long floats that, oh, okay, this is this just happens because I am I don't have a floating salvage. I've sped this up a little bit, so you can see this in a little bit faster time, but pretty much it's really straightforward you pick up number one put the shed stick in turn it on its side pass the shuttle through and then move the shed stick beat then you go to number two which is the third heddle put it in turn it on its side pass the shuttle through your angle beat pull the shed stick out pick up number three put it in turn it pass it through, beat, and then finally the fourth one, and you may or may not need to use the thing, it's, it can be helpful, because sometimes it'll fall like it just did, and then you beat, and start over again. This is one of those ones that it's it's so straightforward and what you're doing is is pretty clear. You're just going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or you can go backwards, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. If you did that, you get zigzags going back and forth um, on the face of your cloth. The neat thing about three one twill is the reverse, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, is one three twill. <laughs> Um, over one under three. This that is the exact opposite of this, and it is a little bit more um, that you have to do because you're lifting three heddles, three sheds at the same time. Here I am trying to figure out which um, whether I went over or under that salvage, my floating salvage. And I'll say it again: you do not have to have a floating salvage. It's only um, it's useful, you know, to keep your edges from having those long warp floats but when you're starting out so you're not having to worry about negotiating too many different things maybe don't worry about putting it in there um, and just focus on your weaving and the center of your work and put the floating salvage in later all right so I'm about to change and we're going to go and add some more thread 
and then I'm going to come back and we're going to be weaving the one and three twill. So I'm I'm kind of gesturing to tell you that I'm going to be going I'm going to be lifting more than one heddle at a time or it could be a, um, a more than one heddle and a pickup stick. It all depends on what I'm trying to do. So from what I'm looking at this is probably I made a mistake I probably didn't go into the right salvage so I am using my pickup stick and I'm trying to figure out the three threads that are up so I've got my three threads up I can look on my look and see okay I've, I've got three threads up and then one's going to be down one set of threads going to be down we don't depending on what which pick it is it will depend on which thread is down right and so you see you know you're doing it right if you're okay I'm doing one three pushing two down and then four must be up because it's going to be a set of three each raise so I am trying to make sure I can see which of the three threads which of the three sheds are up so I don't accidentally catch a wrong one and then I am passing it through and again I am trying to catch my make sure I catch my floating salvages and doing all of that now I'm going to the next one <laughs> and I have to think about it a little bit so I know okay all right I need to pick that one up this one up I'm trying to hold that and any given pick you're going to have um, all but one that you're picking up so I'm pushing down on the third shed so I'm picking up one two and four and I'm using my um, extra shuttle to make sure I've picked up the right threads before I turn it on its side and pass it through and I'm double checking <laughs> to make sure that I've gotten the right things picked up so yes it is totally doable to, to do the multiple heddles at one time um, but sometimes you know I, I like I said I prefer the one where I'm only messing with one heddle at a time all right I'm gonna speed this up a little bit now this is I'm, I'm weaving in front of my my shed block you know on the Cricut if you have a different loom that has like a, an upshed that you can you know upshed neutral shed one like the Ashford I think the Kromsky is made like this where you can you know put the different heddles in the upshed and the downshed um, you you can get away with not holding it because you can actually put the heddles where they're supposed to be you'll see this demonstrated as I'm weaving point twill on the Ashford in the next lesson but um this is helpful even if you have a loom that um, that has a place for you to be able to move it just so that you can see what you're doing so you can use your eyes to see what's happening and um, you know you know you can get in the habit of like watching the threads raise and lower and knowing which threads are doing what because that's useful um, because if you get lost then you need to remember okay where was I what was I lifting up what was happening that being said I again <clears throat> when I have my choice to make between um, you know one three and three one I am three one I'm one three all the way I want to go um, over three under one as opposed to trying to figure out what three threads I'm supposed to be picking up but it's pretty straightforward you know it's not that complicated if you ended up like maybe your pattern calls for you to change over to two two twill you know you're just going to pick up the two sheds and um, and do that and once you get the hang of it you know you're going to get a rhythm and then you're going to be able to execute it a, a little bit faster um, but yeah it's really cool to see the pattern um, being created and to know that you can do this you're you're doing this with your little rigid head of loom and if you 
feel like you want to challenge and you feel like you, you know, you want to go recreate something that you've seen, then you can do it. Now, the question might be, okay, Amy, so how do I put this into practice? How do I um, take something that I've seen in a book or something like that and, you know, be able to weave it? So what you would do is you would thread your loom based on the threading pattern at the top of or whatever is given in the pattern, right? If it is a pattern that has a lift plan, you're just going to follow the lift plan and weave understanding that if they tell you to lift, you know, if it's a lift plan that has you lifting multiple heddles together, if it has a tie up in the upper right hand corner, then you may have to lift more than one heddle together. I would suggest that you just start off simple, you know, create your own um, designs as you're starting out, get comfortable moving the heddles um, together. If you if you know that you probably are going to want to do um, designs that require you to move, you know, the heddles together and have them held together like this, then practice weaving um, one, three, twill. You know, get confident. Get to where you're you're very confident and you can see the threads as they're being picked up so that you know exactly what you need to move. Um, and then, you know, build those muscles. Build that muscle memory so that when you get ready to, um, you know, take on a pattern that has a lot of lifting of, you know, the multiple heddles together, um, you know, two or more heddles together, then you're you're comfortable with it. Um, if you just want to, you know, have fun or just do things with and be able to say, yes, I wove this on my rigid heddle loom. Oh, really? Did you? I thought that was a floor loom. No, no, that was me. I'm just weaving on my rigid heddle loom. Um, if you want to have that conversation <laughs> with your floor loom friends, then I think that, um, you know, 1312 is... You know, or three one twelve. I always get those over three under one is more than um, good enough to be able to prove the point that you can do twills on a rigid head loom. But you know, do whatever makes you happy. Do whatever one that you are going to enjoy the most, and um, just try them all out, and you will find whichever one resonates with you, and pick patterns accordingly. Well. That is it for this video. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to do point twills, and I will be demonstrating that on the Ashford Samplet Loom. I'll see you in that video.